everybody, I'm Sonia, a PhD applicant at the University of Miami Erasmus. I study seismology and am interested in earthquake source. Do you know how often earthquakes occur? Magnitude 2 and smaller earthquakes occur several hundred times a day worldwide. And on the other hand, great earthquakes, namely magnitude 8 and higher, happen more than once a year. So it's important to study earthquakes to see what's going on deep beneath our feet. For example, what is the amount of displacement on a fault when an earthquake occurs? This is achievable through a method, a slipperversion method, about which I'm going to talk today. I divided my discussion into three parts. In the first part, I'll describe the basic concepts of slip inversion. Next, we'll turn our attention to how to obtain slip models using this method. And finally, we'll see an interesting video which is related to slip inversion. For the first part, let's see what slip means. Slip is the amount of displacement of points on a fault when an earthquake occurs. For example, this area starts to displace and after 12 seconds of the rupture, the area has a displacement of 5 meters. So this area has a slip of 5 meters. This is a slip. And now we know what a slip means, let's see what a slip model and a slip inversion are. The rupture process is usually represented by fault slip distribution using a model which is called the slip model. This is an example of a slip model which describes the rupture history. And the method to constrain a slip model by data, usually seismic or geodetic data, is called, guess what, a slip inversion. So we use the slip inversion method to acquire slip models. And why is this important? Why we use the slip inversion method? Because this method helps us understand what happens beneath the Earth. Even when there are no displaced geological marks and gives us valuable information such as stress, strain, displacement, deformation, and the, kinematic, the kinematics of fault zones. So it is a valuable method. For the second part, let's see how we can obtain a slope model using this method. Well, there are several steps. First, we get the waveforms of an earthquake from an agency such as IRIS to process and prepare them for this method. Next, we set the fault model of that earthquake. How? We usually assume one or a few rectangular fault planes in the source region. This is the source of the earthquake, and this is an example of a fault plane. And then we divide this rectangular fault plane into a number of subfaults. We want to calculate the amount of a slip on each of these subfaults in this method. For this purpose, we create synthetic waveforms based on the preferred waveforms of the first step to acquire the amount of a slip on each of, on each of soft walls. This is an example of a preferred waveform in black and synthetic waveforms in red. So what happens here? We use the slip inversion method to create synthetic waveforms and these waveforms give us the amount of displacement on each of the softballs, or in other words, give us the slip model. This is a glimpse into slip inversion. At the end, I'd like to show you a video which demonstrates how a slip is born when an earthquake occurs. This is dynamic rupture simulation 
uh, which shows a propagating rupture front and a growing patch of slip. As you see here, the rupture front propagates and began to propagate across the fault plates. Yeah, that's it. Okay. This is the fault plane and this is the slope distribution of this earthquake. Thank you so much for your attention. If you have any question, please email me at soniabozagon at signrasmus.miami.edu. Hope to see you soon. Bye.